Okay, class, today we'll be going on to chapter 17, Applications of Integration. Okay, now I'm just going to define for you what we mean by definite integrals. Now, can you look at this line? This line is represented by the equation y equals to x plus 3. Okay, now if I want to find this shaded region, that means from 1 to 5, how am I going to find this shaded region? Now, if I'm going to get the y coordinates, I put 1 here, this is 4. I put 5 here, this is 8. Now, realize that this particular shape is a trapezium. So, area of shaded region is half times height. This will be 4. Okay. And times sum of parallel sides, 4 plus 8. So, if I work this out, this will be a 24 unit square. Okay. Now, how do we get the integration or definite integral. Now, if I integrate from 1 to 5, now take note, we go from below to top. 1 to 5, x plus 3, I will get x squared over 2 plus 3x. I integrate this, x squared over 2 plus 3x. Then I put a bracket, 5, 1 outside. Now note that this must be a square bracket. This must be a square bracket, must. All right. If not, it's a wrong notation. So what I do is that after I've integrated, I put 5 in to replace the x. I find out this answer that I minus. I put the 1 in here. Okay. And evaluate this thing. So after I evaluated, I found that it's 27 and a half minus 3 and a half. I get 24. So you'll realize that this 24 is actually the same. So in order to find the area here, the shaded region here, is the same as integrating from 1 to 5 this particular expression for the line okay then after that I plug in the value for 5 and I plug in the value for 1 I take the difference that will give me the answer okay this is the concept of integration of the definite integral okay now the area obtained in this way is called the definite integral of the function fx from x equals to a to x equals to b and is denoted by you integrate fx from a to b. Alright, now I give you another example. Now this is just part of the curve y equal to x squared on the positive side. From a to b, if you want this shaded region, you integrate from a to b, you integrate x squared. So you will be able to get the area under the curve. Alright, so this is the meaning of definite integral. Okay, now, then I'm moving on to something that we already know. Now, if we differentiate this and we get this, what will happen is that if we integrate this, we'll get back this. This is what we have learned in the first part of integration. Okay, now, so if the d dx fx is equal to small fx, then the definite integral of the function fx from x goes to a to x goes to b is, I integrate from a to b, I integrate this one, I will get fx, then from a to b. Now note that for definite integral, there is no plus c, there's no constant, because it represents an area, there must not be a variable down there. Okay, so this one when I sub in, you become fb minus fa. Alright, I repeat. If I differentiate this, I get this. So if I integrate this, I'll get back this. So I integrate this, I get back this. From A to B, A to B, I sub in, I get this thing. Okay? Let me illustrate this with an example. This is integration from negative 2 to negative 1, this whole thing. Now I integrate. Then I put the same thing, negative 1, negative 2. Now note that it must be a square bracket. Square bracket. Okay? Then I sub in negative 1 for x. All right? Minus, I sub in negative 2 for x. I get this, and then I will get the answer. So this is the concept of definite integral. Okay, now likewise, for this particular case, I write it in this manner. I integrate it, I put 9, 4. Then I plug in 9, I plug in 4, I'll get 14 and 2 thirds. Now class, please bear in mind that you have to show me the substitution before you get the answer. You cannot jump from here to here. You must show me the substitution before you get the answer. Okay? You cannot just jump from here to here because I do not see the substitution. I must know that you sub in the top one first, then the bottom one. Alright? So this is a compulsory step. Okay? So next one. Part C. 
okay? I can rewrite this as half, then you remember I can bring out a constant, so I put this here, I integrate, I put 5, 2, likewise, I plug in 5, and I plug in 2, I take the difference, I find the answer. So this will be the definite integral. Okay, now so far I have done the examples on algebra. Next we are going on to trigonometry. Now note that in trigo, all these are in radians. Okay, they are in radians. So I integrate this, I integrate this. Put pi 0, sub in pi, sub in 0. Then you get the answer pi over 2. Now, you need not leave it as pi over 2 if they did not ask for exact value. You can give me the three significant figure. It's also okay. It doesn't matter. Alright, so this is your example 2. Now, example 2 part B is also the same thing. Okay. Now, so we integrate this. 4 become 4x. This one become 1 over 4 tangent 4x. Pi over 4 0. We plug in pi over 4 over here. When we plug in pi over 4, this one become pi. So we have this, and it's pi. Okay? Now, this is something that I want you to take note in case they want the difference, I mean the integration in terms of exact value. Now, I want you to take note that e ln k is actually equals to k. Now, this is the proof. e ln k is y. I take ln on both sides. ln e is 1. So I have ln k equals to ln y. k equals to y. Now, how do I apply this? When I have e ln 2, the answer is 2. Okay? Likewise, if let's say I have e ln 4, the answer will be 4. Okay? So, this is to simplify your, um, what do you call, this is to simplify your manipulation. Okay? Now, next we go on to example 3. We integrate this, we take out the constant, we can always take out the constant. Then we integrate this to become this. Okay? 1 over this is actually e minus this whole thing, so I flip this thing, okay? So I integrate, I plug in the values, I give it to 3 significant figures, okay? Your integration must be very strong, because once your integration is wrong, when you plug in the values, it's wrong too, alright? So next part. Next, I rewrite this in terms of this, then I integrate, I plug in 2, I plug in 1, then I get the answer. You can also give the answer to three significant figure. It doesn't matter at all. All right. Now, next. This is an application question. Differentiate this with respect to x. Hence, evaluate this. Okay. So, I differentiate this. I use quotient rule. Okay. I don't think I need to elaborate that much. You can look at the answer. And finally, I get this one. That means when I differentiate this, I get this. So, when I integrate this, I'll get back this. Okay. I want to take note of this expression, okay? Alright, now I'm moving on. Okay. Now, I summarize the result here. When I differentiate this, I get this. So, when I integrate this, I'll get back this. Now, the question wants us to integrate this one. Okay? But we will realize that we cannot. We have to rewrite certain things in order to do it. We must rewrite this in this form. So if I add a 3, I must add a 1 third here. Okay? Take note that you can only add constants. So if I integrate this, I will get back this. Okay? So I put 0, negative 4. Okay? I plug in the values, I will get 4 over 3. Alright? So, for the homework, you'll be doing these questions. I won't read it. You just copy it down or you pause the video and take down the questions that you're supposed to do. Okay, take down the questions that you're supposed to do. Then you'll proceed with your homework. But before that, let me go through one concept here before you do your homework. Okay, I want to go through one thing here before you do your homework. Now, can we take a look at this? When we integrate from B to A, fx dx is fx AB. Okay, so it's FA minus FB. Alright, now where did I get this? Remember, this particular function that I have, when I differentiate FX, I get this. So when I integrate this, I'll get back this. Okay, this is found in the previous part. Now, I want you to look at, if I put a negative here, and I flip these two numbers, FX, DX, what will happen? 
Now, negative stays here. Okay, you look, don't look at the negative. Huh? Negative stays, when we integrate this, is fx, so ba, so ba here. But because there's a negative, I bring it in, so it becomes fa minus fp. So, realize that these two expressions is the same. So, what will happen is that if I have ab and ba with a negative, these two are actually equivalent. Okay, this will help you in your some of the questions that I've given in exercise 17.1. Okay, so you will proceed with all the questions that I've given for your homework here. Okay, and you can check the answer later after you have completed the homework. Please do not just copy the solutions. You must do it first in order to learn. Alright, thank you.